17 Lands is a community-driven data sharing platform that I think is mandatory for every limited player. If you're newer to draft, it's gonna help you pick the best cards. If you're a little bit more experienced at draft, it's gonna quickly help you see what works and what doesn't in each set. And if you're some kind of drafting savant, it's gonna tell you what everyone else is drafting so that you can ignore it and make your own crazy brew. This video is gonna sound like a sponsor video, but it's not. I just think this tool is that helpful. If you're looking to improve your win rate, then honestly, the best thing I can recommend is subscribe to this channel because every week I'm gonna be putting out new videos to help you you improve. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can even join as a member. So from the homepage of 17 Lands, if you click on getting started, it will take you to a guide on how to install the program. I'll walk you through a Windows installation in this case. So if you click on the GitHub link, you'll get an EXE to run. Download the EXE, run it, choose install, and then your computer may check that you're safe with running this because it is from a unverified third party source, but just click run anyway and it will complete the installation. At this point, it will ask for your user token before it can start parsing the data. Basically, this is used to link your account on the website to your PC. So if you haven't already made an account, do so, and then you can copy your user code from the website into the client. The information that you'll be sharing up onto the website from your PC is part of the player log. You'll find that in your app data folder, and this is the full address of the file on your PC. Just select the player.log file and hit open. Once you've selected the player log, you can hit start parsing. And once that's done, then you can hit view my data. You can see your win rate through different formats and event types. You can check your rank progression. You can see your trophies. And you can also click into individual drafts to see exactly how they went. And by that, I mean you can see every pick, but also you can go in and see every match. The replay system is especially impressive because not only can you go through each turn, you're able to share links to both the draft and the game to any other person you want to. So if you want to complain about getting unlucky and send it to a friend, you can do that. And if you want to improve by sending it to somebody who might be able to assist you, you can also do that. One of the slightly less practical but more fun stats is just to see how many times you've drafted certain cards. I was definitely drafting all the Vanish from sites. One stat I think that is a bit underrated is player behavior. This shows things like mulligan rate, how often you are to put your pack one pick one in your final deck, how often you are to splash other colors, etc. And it maps you against the average for that set. I'm pretty confident in my mulligan ability, but I might be drafting too openly because I could be putting my pack one pick one in my deck more often, and I could also be splashing more colors. If you're not very familiar with all the cards in the set and you maybe just want a no stakes test run, then you can also do mock drafts on the website. Digging into the wider data, we can look at all the color pair win rates. You can see everything from monocolor to monocolor with a small splash to color pairs and color pairs of the splash and tricolor, etc. A couple of important things to think about in this page is to look initially at the overall win rate for every deck. In this case, it's 54.6%. So if you look at a card and it says it has a 52% win rate, that isn't good as far as 17 lands is concerned. That's below average. This is because the average person who is entrenched enough in magic to actually install and use 17 lands is above 50% win rate. And this can help give you context for the win rates of everything. On this page, you're also able to filter by the skill of the player. You are able to filter either by all users like we just did or bottom, middle and top skill brackets. This is often about a 5% jump in either direction, with the bottom players being a little bit below 50% and the best players pushing 60%. When you go into the actual card data page, you'll be greeted with a lot of stuff. Recently, they added a grading system, which I think is a lot easier to follow. At the top, you're able to filter by set, type of format, the skill of the player, and then the color and rarity that you want to look into. So the default view is ideal for say a pack one pick one scenario where you have no ties to any color and just want to know what the strongest card is. But let's say after pack one, you're pretty sure you're going to be a red black deck. Now you can filter the color selection down to red black and see what cards are best in that archetype. When you hover over any of these cards, you'll see not just their game in hand win rate, which is how often you win when you draw the card, You'll also see the ALSA rating, which is the number that reflects on average which pick around the draft the card is taken. So if an ALSA is, say, 2, on average, the second person to see the card will take it. But if there's an ALSA of 8 or greater, you might get to see that card again on average. So you can plan around this when you're drafting. If there's two cards that are equally good for you, but one of them has a higher ALSA rating, you should take, generally, the lower ALSA rating card and hope to get the other one back. 17 Lands also offers some very helpful paid features. If you want to support them, you can sign up to their Patreon and they offer a few different features for different tiers. One of them is individual card data. So this allows you to click into a individual card and see some specific information about it for each set. From Dustmorn last year, there's Cursed Recording. A couple of interesting things you can see here are that on average, putting this card in your deck lowers your win rate because this just compares the data for every level of play. But you can also see that over time, win rate with the card improved by quite a large margin as people figured out where the hell you should play it. This is the kind of thing you would expect from a slightly complicated niche archetype card. 
However, if we take Liliana Dreadhorde General from Foundations, well, she just massively improves the win rate of every deck she goes in. The ability to see if a card is over or underrated can be very helpful when deciding how early to pick it, but also if you should maybe adjust your own evaluations. If you're unsure what a successful deck involving a card would look like, then one way to do that is to look into the trophy decks. 17 Lands anonymously shares trophy decks on the website, and you're able to see not just the deck, but also the full draft. There are also other additional features which I'd say, whilst less useful for one individual draft in the moment, can be quite good for increasing your understanding of the format overall. The draft metagame tab shows you the popularity of different cards over time. So you can see which cards were underdrafted and then maybe are now appropriately drafted or overdrafted and get a sense for where things have shaken out. Format speed can also be interesting. The faster a format, the more polarizing who goes first can be to the win rate. And then there's other even more in-depth statistical analysis you can do, like pairing cards between each other or diving really in-depth onto particular color combinations within a set. I hope this video helped you out. If you're interested in learning more about magic, then check this video out next.